Hi there, my name is Corey Gaddy, Technical Solutions Consultant for TPM. For 4 Minute Friday today, we're going to talk about the ins and outs of vehicle tracking. Vehicle tracking is an Autodesk product and is used to verify access for vehicles throughout your site. The plus for vehicle tracking is that it also provides you a quick way to do roundabout design and parking lot layouts for your site. Vehicle tracking is available in the AC collection as a download in addition to Civil 3D. Okay, so now let's get into the software. Once the program is installed, you'll see this button appear on your interface. If you click on that button, this menu populates. Under this menu, there are several options for utilizing vehicle tracking. First one we'll look at is Auto Drive. You can do that by doing an Auto Drive arc or by restricting your movements through a certain bearing. I'll go ahead and click on Arc Drive. It gives me my custom settings in terms of my defaults. Okay, I'm going to use this SU30 single unit truck and click on Proceed you'll see this image of a vehicle appears and you want to click that image in where you want to start and then we'll orient the vehicle in the direction we want to travel and then it gives us this menu where we can position the orientation of the vehicle and then we'll start driving the vehicle into our site it's a series of clicks along the path we want to travel throughout the site We'll go through and try to make sure we don't conflict with anything that we shouldn't conflict. Once we get to the end of our path, we'll go ahead and hit enter to accept the path and now you have your route. You can go back and make adjustments as necessary. Another way to route your vehicle is through a swept path. It's found under this menu, under Swept Paths. What you'll notice is that we have a polyline here that represents the center line of the path of travel. And we can use that to route our vehicle. In order to route our vehicle, we'll go up here to Swept Paths. Click on that drop down. The first one here is Follow. That's going to follow a line. We'll click there. This menu populates. We'll pick our SU-30 single unit truck. And then we can click on our path. This menu comes up for our default settings. The direction we want to travel, the position, so on. We'll hit OK. All right, and then we'll get this message. We'll go ahead and hit OK there to follow the path at the speed indicated and then it creates the route for us along that path. It's a quick way to create a route based upon the center line of the path of travel. Another cool feature found in vehicle tracking is the ability to quickly create a parking lot layout. We'll go up here and create a new row of parking. We'll pick the parking style that we want. We'll go with single row. and then we'll indicate if we want it to be on the right or the left we'll go ahead and grab right only we can determine if we want it to start with islands or not to start and end with an island okay, I'll uncheck that because I don't want to and then I'll just click where I want to start my parking spaces and it'll generate those spaces very quickly for me I can do the same thing for a double row of parking same process I'll go to new row this time I'll go to standard double row and then I'll stay with double row here both All right. this time I'll start with an island and I'll end with an island and then I'll go ahead and click those spaces in you 
could also easily put parking in on a section with a bin like this one. Same process, we have our parking menu open. All right, I'm doing the right only. I'm going to go ahead and click here at the start of it. I'll run over here to the tangent, to the other tangent, and then the end of it. Okay, and then I can come back if I want to and adjust that section to that line. Okay, now I have that bended section of parking in very quickly. Another cool feature with vehicle tracking is the ability to create a roundabout. I'll click here on roundabout. It brings open this window asking me what type of roundabout do I want to create. I'm just going to do a rural single lane roundabout. Okay, the defaults come up, so I just make sure those are okay. gives me the ability to adjust my scale and then other defaults and details come up associated with the roundabout it wants to know my lane widths and apron widths also wants to know my inscribed circle diameter and my center island diameter just go ahead and put something like a 30 in here center island just make it a little bit smaller my apron width okay um, has to do with the width of the apron they're coming out of the roundabout all right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. We have minimum and maximum values. And then we could also indicate the existing surface and the final surface we want to look at. I'll go ahead and pop my roundabout in here. Okay, now it allows me to determine what roads are coming and going um, in and out of the roundabout. So I'll go ahead and click here on one of my alignments. It's going to come into the roundabout. It wants to know my lane width there. Okay, I really have a three lane road, so I'm going to go ahead and put in 18. It's going to give me half of the lane okay, for the approaching. And then the same thing for departing. It creates this road coming into the roundabout, and then it allows me to continue creating roads away from the roundabout. I have the same parameters on the other side of the roundabout, so I'm going to go ahead and make that 18 and 18. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I have the lane coming out of the roundabout. And then the last lane that I need is the lane going into my driveway. So I'll go ahead and click on the alignment for that. And then I'll go ahead and make that half of the road, which is going to be 12 and 12 for my entrance. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then it swings my lane just a little bit to meet back up with my site. And I could adjust that going forward, maybe make the center island a little bit smaller and maybe have it line up a little bit better with my driveway. What you'll notice is once the roundabout is in, it looks like a corridor. And we could take that roundabout and make a corridor surface out of it and add it to our surface and then end up with our roundabout graded in to our site. Well, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching.